smoke, breathe me in and let me go Sing to your heart to find you Hello my lovelies, this is Sims Fell and welcome to a bonus episode of this week's Sims 4 Vampire Amazon series Generation 2. When we left off in the last episode, we had a lot happening. So the girls went over to see the cats or the kittens turn into cats at the feline fairy house and then in the machinima we just had so much packed in. So much unexplained, so many unexplained things packed in. And then a little bit happened even after the machinima, which I will try to deconstruct and tell you guys all about in this episode. So we probably aren't going to do much in this episode. It's just going to be me following the ladies around, uh, except unless Narcissa goes into labor and gives birth because she is in her third trimester. So my guess is she's going to have that baby in this episode. But while we just follow the ladies around doing their own thing, I am basically going to deconstruct whatever the hell happened in the machinima and let you guys know where we are at in terms of story. Because you guys had some crazy, crazy, crazy um, predictions, or not predictions, but uh, conspiracy not even conspiracies. Uh, like, uh, stuff? <laughs> you guys were cooking up all sorts of scenarios and stuff about what you thought was happening and what the different Sims were, uh, like, uh, allying themselves with or who they were allying themselves with, what they were doing, the, the state of being for them. It was all sorts of crazy things. So, Narkissa, get back inside. You're not supposed to be playing in the rain. Oh, jeez. Okay. So, I'm going to try and tell you guys in a chronological order, if I remember, because I didn't write any of this down, it's like in my head. So let's see what happened. Right, in the last episode, we were spending time with Persephone and Ursula, who decided that they would go over to the glow top tree and hang out with each other, do some homework for the Vampire Academy. Now, when we showed up there, they... Um, didn't have any homework, we found out, because I don't think they have been to Vampire Academy since they aged up. So we thought, you know what, why don't we take the girls to the feline fairy house because the cats have grown up and they can go ahead and visit the cats, see the feline fairies. Now, if you guys have been watching the previous episode, you will know that the cats are a symbol of the living, or you could say they are an aspect of the living. Um, back at the Sheba Castle or Castle Sheba where we have the Death Rites room, the, the Royal Crypt. We have fairies over there because fairies are the aspects of death. And then near the fairies, I think, we have cats. If I'm wrong, then I apologize. But regardless, cats are supposed to be the aspect of the living. So the feline fairy house is kind of a symbol of balance between life and death. Also, you guys will know that the cats speak to... Well, I don't know if they speak to spirits exactly probably do, but they have thoughts, emotions, they're very sentient, very intelligent beings, and they can only communicate their intelligence to the fairies. The fairies have this really interesting link to the spirit realm, and so do the cats, and they meet there, and they basically exchange thoughts and information, blah, blah, blah. So the cats have certain powers to them, which means they sense what's happening in the world around, and if there is a disturbance in the balance between life and death, they sense that as well. So the cats did sense that something was happening, something odd was happening in the world. Now that oddity was the fact that Sims, for example, Lady Lilith and Lady Cynthia were dying before their due time. And they were having unnatural causes of death, which was inflicted by someone else. So the cats, obviously having a relationship with the fairies, went ahead and... Uh, discussed, told, communicated, whatever they were feeling to the fairies. And the fairies have that sort of thing amongst themselves. Now when the children went over there in the clip in the machinima, we had Ursula who was getting really chummy with Fiera, one of the fairies that we have over there. And Fiera unknowingly told Ursula some of these things that the cats had confided in her without realizing that Ursula is a child and she probably shouldn't be told these things. Now Cleo told off Fiera and they had a little bit of an argument because Cleo feels that any information to do with balance, the living and the dead should be kept strictly within the fairy circle. 
right? The feline fairy circle. She doesn't feel like Fiera or anyone or even Dot should go blabbering their mouths to anyone outside, even if it's from the Royal Coven, anyone outside the immediate fairy circle about what's happening. Now, it was too late because, well, Ursula already heard all of that. And Persephone, as you saw, was feeling very <laughs> caught in the middle of it because she's a very peaceful sim and I don't think she likes a lot of conflict and discord amongst people. So, anyways, she encouraged Ursula to return back home and they came back to the castle. Now, Ursula is actually a very intelligent girl, as you guys might have known, realized, I don't know, or speculated or not speculated. She is mean. Some of you are saying that's probably because she sees all the other Sims having mothers, but she doesn't. Regardless, she is mean, but she is very intelligent. She's calculative, I would like, I like to think. So with this new knowledge, probably also with whatever you guys said, she thought, hey, I know something that's happened to my mother. I know that something odd has happened to my mother. Her death was unnatural, it seems. The cats have pretty much just um, confirmed that. And she already kind of knows, like in the one day she's been at the castle, she's been at the castle for like a day or two, she has already begun to feel out the different relationships between the vampires and the power dynamics. And I think she's realized that Morgana is very close, very high up there to the queen in terms of authority. She is the closest vampires to the queen, and it seems as though Morgana is the... Oh, crap. She's in her demon form. She's in her demon form. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Jeez, Morgana. Jeez. But she realized, Ursula realized, that um, if anything was to happen to Morgana... Not happen, but if Morgana was to be brought to light or her misdoings were to be brought to light, someone couldn't just go up to the queen and say, oh, Morgana's done something wrong. Even though Morgana and the queen are having a falling out, they're still close, and the queen would probably disregard any accusation towards Morgana. Ursula thought, hey, I am a child. In the eyes of the adults, especially the queen, I am innocent, and I am not intelligent enough to think up something that is going to be made up, right? Or try to sabotage anyone. So she innocently just trotted up to the queen, and plus, she knows that right now, the queen and Morgana are having a little bit of a falling out. She is in with all the rumors in the castle. So she decided to innocently, in quotation marks, go up to the queen and just to mention what she heard over at the feline fairy house in terms of a disturbance of the cats and that... There is something going on where the spirits have communicated, I think the spirit of Cynthia and the spirit of Lilith perhaps, communicated with the cats and they mentioned flashes of golden hair or they mentioned Morgana, right? Flashes of golden hair at the castle. And I'm sure the queen's intelligent enough to draw a conclusion and think, hey, seems like the only person with golden hair at the castle is Morgana. So, um, uh, meanwhile, while that was happening, now Clara was having a little bit of a catch-up, you could say, with Morgana. She decided, I want to go ahead and speak to Morgana about something. I don't know for what reason, but she went and spoke to her, and she found Morgana swimming in the secret garden in the pool where Lilith had died. Now, she decided to settle down next to Morgana and confided a few things in her, or kind of, we Morgana thinks that Clara confided a few things in her. But Clara basically went ahead, spoke to Morgana, tried to get into her good books, and Morgana thinking, oh yeah, I have someone in my side, I have another ally, she went ahead and she confided a few things that maybe she should not have. Anyways, all of that finished and done. After they had their conversation, the queen called Morgana out here next to the waterway because she wanted to speak to her about something. And when she came over there, now Morgana has no clue or had no clue what the hell was going on. The queen called her, oh geez, this is irritating me. The queen called her over here and then brought Ursula with her. And the queen basically um, said what whatever Ursula said to her. So she basically told Morgana about this, you know, death that's been happening that isn't natural someone's been actually plotting against them in the crown and that there there is a clue or the spirits have been mentioning golden haired in the royal castle something like that so basically queen narcissa told everything that morgana was doing to morgana without mentioning morgana's name now 
Morgana felt a little bit confronted, but she was trying to argue her case, and the queen brought along Ursula to say, well, here is the child of the, the, you know, the vampires that you killed, without blatantly saying that. Now, Morgana got really defensive, and she tried to explain, well, I don't think that whatever the cats are saying are that accurate that you know, I mean they're cats how much can they really know and how do you know the spirits aren't just blabbering around as we know spirits don't speak like we do they have all sorts of things they could possibly mean I don't think this is what they meant anyway she was getting super defensive and the queen kind of left it at that and she decided to mull over a few things and came back in the castle and continued doing whatever the hell she was doing meanwhile Clara actually went straight to Lady Kennedy, who now has her title, by the way. She went straight to Lady Kennedy. And the reason she did that was because Lady Kennedy, taking on the role of scholar after Lilith, who passed away, decided to continue the, mis continue the investigation because that's part of what she's supposed to be doing. She was continuing her investigation and she had connected a few dots that was leading her to Morgana, but she wasn't too sure. Now, Clara went to Lady Kennedy and said, Hey, I had a conversation with Lady Morgana, and she told me some things which are very suspicious. So, Clara is not in league with Morgana, guys. She's not in league. She told um, Lady Kennedy what was going on, or the little snippets of information that Morgana told her, and Clara doesn't know the whole picture. But Kennedy, using that, managed to link Morgana to the death of Cynthia. Not sure about the death of Lilith, but definitely to the death of Cynthia. So she had that information, uh, she had a report all written out, and she was mulling over whether to tell the queen and how to tell the queen, because she had some other problems. So Kennedy came to the castle with a secret of her own. Now that secret was that she was pregnant. Right. So she was having a little bit of a pep talk to herself in the mirror, trying to figure out what the hell to do, how the hell to tell the queen that, oh, hey, by the way, I didn't tell you, but I'm pregnant. Because if the queen had known that she was pregnant, the queen probably would not have picked her for the role of scholar. So she didn't exactly include that piece of information when she was basically giving herself up for the role. And so she was afraid because what if the queen kicked her out, you know, and replaced her with someone else as the scholar? What if that happened? And all sorts of things. And the queen's kind of strict about those sort of things. I mean, she doesn't mind people getting pregnant because obviously, you know, Kennedy can get pregnant and Clara can get pregnant. That's fine. And they can have children. It's just that the queen's very controlling about... Um, like, it's under the royal authority, so you have to get the queen's permission um, to go ahead because it's kind of like a population control controlling the size of the coven and those sort of things and ensuring that the children who are born into the coven are from lineages that are you know predominantly vampire and they're from trusted sources that sort of thing so she was really unsure she was bringing unknown genetic material to the coven so she was panicking, had no clue what the hell was going on. Now, while she was having this little bit of breakdown to the mirror, um, uh, or to herself in the mirror, um, Lady Morgana decided to come back into the castle, and then she realized that, oh, probably a bit too late, that she probably confided a few things in Morgana, not Morgana, and Lady Clara that she shouldn't have. And that Lady Clara, not knowing the whole story, could very much go to Kennedy or to anyone else and connect the dots. Obviously, Kennedy and Narcissa haven't spoken to each other about what they've been doing in terms of Morgana or what they've learned in terms of Morgana, but Morgana is practically trapped on all sides, right? One side's the queen, the other side is Kennedy. So she thought, oh, and, and she, I think, re, yeah, when she was coming this way, so she heard, I don't know where she was going, I think she was going to the bathroom too, because as you guys know, when she's in a demon form, she likes talking to herself in the mirror, or talking to her normal, uh, like normal form. But as she was walking past the bathroom, she heard Kennedy's little inner turmoil, or more like spoken turmoil, because she was speaking to herself, and she also heard that Kennedy had this piece of information on Morgana, and I think what Kennedy was waiting for is... 
do I tell the queen that I'm pregnant while I'm giving her this report on Morgana? Will she be in, like, will I be in her good books if that happens? And will she allow me to keep the child and blah, blah, blah? All that sort of thing. Now, Morgana saw or heard this and she thought, hey, I can use this to blackmail Kennedy into not telling the queen or handing in her report. Because the queen kind of already knows that Morgana has been doing something wrong or that Morgana was responsible for the death of Cynthia, but she doesn't have evidence for it. The only thing she has is a child telling her that uh, Morgana is the one. And although she believes in Morgana, I mean the cats, I don't think Queen Arkissa is questioning the cats because they are aspects of the goddess. So she, she trusts Ursula and it's not like Ursula is saying anything wrong. Ursula is just being very smart and calculative about how she tells the queen. So uh, Morgana thought that the only thing the queen needs is actual evidence to prove to Morgana and to everyone else that, oh, she actually did go ahead and do this. And that proof is the report that Kennedy wrote. Now Morgana decided to go into the bathroom straight after that and thought, I will blackmail Kennedy. And she told Kennedy to give her the report because if she doesn't, then she's going to regret her decision. Now Kennedy did not call Morgana's bluff. Kennedy said, no, I don't think you're going to be able to do anything to me. I am the scholar and I have something that is important and I'm going to go tell the queen. If you haven't done anything wrong, that there's nothing you should be afraid of. But if you have done something wrong, then there's nothing that's going to stop me. Right? She put on a brave face and she said, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And she did not call Morgana's bluff. Now, she was still thinking about a few things, so she didn't hand in the report. She was waiting or for whatever she was waiting for. And then... Morgana decided to make an example of Kennedy and this is another private struggle that's been happening so nobody else knows what's been happening between Morgana and Kennedy but Morgana decided to go ahead she went down into her lair she concocted a few things from the herbs and stuff that she's got growing and from the cow plant and stuff concocted a few things and she slipped it to Kennedy and Kennedy had a miscarriage so guys, Kennedy is not actually pregnant. She was, but she had a miscarriage because Morgana fed her something to make an example of her and to prove to her that, no, I was not bluffing. I did actually mean what I said and you are not going to regret ever going against me. So that's what has happened over there. And that little piece happened after the machinima or between this episode and the machinima. Um, everyone's now a little bit, wait, I swear I fed the ladies. I fed the ladies. Did they not all have a drink? I don't think Morgana drank. Hmm. Who's okay to be drank from? Someone here should be okay. Yeah, okay, let's drink from her because you are really thirsty. And she is walking around in demon form. This is the first time she's done this. So obviously she, the demon took control when she was, you know, poisoning K Kennedy or making Kennedy have a miscarriage. So that's the tea about what's been happening, guys. Do let me know what you think down in the comments below. Ah, that like whole explanation took 20 flipping minutes. I apologize, but a lot happened in that little machinima that I just could not include in the machinima. So I thought I'd just have an explanation episode uh, for this one. But I hope you guys enjoyed that and were okay with that. But yeah, I'm exhausted. That's all that has been happening. And she's very tense. She's got a broken umbrella. She's scared of thunderstorms. She's loner, so there's all these strangers around her. She feels very isolated. <sighs> a lot has been going on. And at this stage, the queen does know, does know that Morgana has been in the wrong. But she hasn't decided what she's going to do with Morgana. She doesn't exactly have the proof needed to convict Morgana, like legally. Um, and she needs that report from Kennedy to do that. Now, is Kennedy going to go ahead and hand in that report? Because, oh, geez, what's happening? I do think that she is afraid now. She would be. She just lost her child. Wait, debug? There we go. Yeah, I feel like she would be because she did not call Morgana's bluff. And then she ended up getting poisoned and she miscarried. So she's not pregnant anymore. Like, what else could Morgana do? 
And at the same time, I don't think she can tell anyone that Morgana slipped me something. She definitely did something wrong because I was pregnant. I'm not pregnant anymore. She can't say that because the pregnancy was a secret. And maybe, you know, if she tells someone about the pregnancy, I think she's also scared she's going to get kicked out for pulling something like that uh, or lying to the queen. So I don't know if she's even going to tell anyone about that. Who knows? If you guys have any more theories, then feel free to leave them down in the comments below. But that was very dramatic, and that's what has happened. I do feel like the queen's going to be having her child maybe in the next episode, actually. And with that said and done, I'm going to go off and leave this episode here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys weren't too bored and actually enjoyed this episode and the explanation. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.